Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. You're watching Unlimited Options Investing. Yesterday, Kathy Wood came out with an in the know video that she comes out with every so often. And the topics she came out with yesterday were pretty interesting. So I'm gonna be going over the video with you guys and we're gonna go from there. And I actually just recently came out with a video on Kathy Wood and her ARK Invest, whether you should invest with her or invest in yourself. Don't get me wrong, I still like Kathy Wood, I still like her approach and philosophies to investing, but the day-to-day -day trades and just being able to do it yourself, I believe in that more than giving her your money. That's just my opinion, but I still believe, again, in the long-term approach of innovation. If this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, welcome aboard and hit that subscribe button here at Unlimited Options Investing. We talk everything in the markets from stocks crypto options and we're investing for the long term as always smash that like button and let's get started greetings everyone um well it certainly has been a pretty wild time in the market and uh we are here for you in terms of communicating uh what we know or what we understand at the moment. And uh, that's what I'm here to do as usual on Employment Friday. So normally, and, and today we will start with uh, monetary policy, fiscal policy, economic uh, statistics, what the markets are telling us. And then I'll share with you a little bit uh, about our brainstorm today. We talked a lot uh, about what is going on in the stock market, uh, trying to put all the cross currents together. So. Uh, Pretty interesting insights out of that. Uh, but first, uh, you know, I've been getting the question, what keeps you awake at night? Uh, and um, I can tell you, honestly, the one thing that keeps me up at night is that as the market goes down and our strategy is uh, punished disproportionately, uh, my what. No kidding, her ARC funds are down big, especially with Tesla as her biggest position and Tesla having such a great year, yet her funds are down so much. Keeps me up at night is knowing that uh, some people are going to panic if they're looking at their accounts on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you know, we, Guilty. we keep saying, uh, almost every time I talk, I say we have a five-year investment time horizon. And uh, at the moment, uh, we are close to, from an expectations point of view, uh, a record in terms of what we expect from our portfolios during the next five years at a compound annual rate of return. Uh, I've seen it uh, only higher once, and that was after the route in the fourth quarter of 18. And uh, based on our expectations at that time, uh, we believed that our portfolios would deliver a compound annual rate of return of 42%. So that's 42% over five years. That's more than a quintupling. Uh, and we're just about there again. So she's expecting a 5x over the next five years. So again, uh, ahead of just spectacular growth rates, exponential growth rates, uh, associated with the innovation platforms, uh, so DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology. And even more importantly, the convergence between and among those platforms. We believe that our companies, from a revenue growth point of view and ultimately a profit growth point of view, are going to show exponential growth rates. And we would assume, now we may not be right, but we would assume uh, that the stocks would award them uh, or the market would reward them accordingly. Uh, so with that said, uh, just uh, let me talk a little bit about FUD, uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt in a market when uh, Chairman Powell, Federal Reserve Chairman Powell, uh, sort of changed his mind from inflation is transitory to perhaps it's not transitory. I think that has unnerved the markets and we've got investors and analysts fleeing back to their benchmark. She's not wrong. Uh, he went from very dovish to hawkish just like that right after he got appointed the second term. Uh, so a lot of skepticism regarding Powell with that sudden change in his view of inflation. Oops. 
Uh, our strategies uh, typically uh, include stocks that are not in the broad-based benchmarks. And so our stocks are the ones they sell in order to move back into the benchmarks. I've been through this time and time and time again. This is no different. Uh, and so we usually do the opposite. Uh, we know they're throwing our stocks out and therefore, instead of trying to get close to any benchmark, and as you, as you know, we don't have a benchmark, we're looking to the future, not the past, uh, we concentrate our portfolios towards our highest conviction names and toward those stocks that have been punished disproportionately. And this is what got me wanting to make this video is when she said this time is no different. In terms of when the market sells off, they sell off her stocks for the hyper growth, high multiple name that are still more early days and still have a lot of runway to go. The companies that haven't proven yet that they can create high margins and high profitability. But my issue with Kathy and her fund are companies like Zoom and Zillow that have no specific moat. I want the best of breed stocks at whatever they do. Tesla, she has that, but Shopify, concentrate in those kind of names. Square, she had a lot more Square in the fund last year than sold it off for more Teladoc. And right now Teladoc isn't proven whatsoever, so that's why we're seeing such a harsh move with her funds and we believe unfairly in the marketplace. And just to give you a glimpse of what I know, our portfolios, our strategies have been associated with stay at home, uh, stay at home stocks because they treated us so well during the coronavirus crisis. Uh, but the point we've been trying to make is that the world has changed permanently uh, because of the move towards increased digitalization. We're not going back. And, uh, and therefore, we th think that you should start thinking about uh, these stocks, uh, not as stay-at-home stocks, uh, but stay-connected stocks. Like She's not saying things that are wrong. People do associate her stocks with stay-at-home stocks, but what I would counter-argue, the market is free to choose however it wants to value a stock, and right now the sentiment isn't there for your stock, so it's not unfair. But yeah, it is fair to say that they're grouped with other stocks that are also being sold off. That's fine, but I mean, that's fair game. Stay competitive stocks. Stay globally competitive stocks, uh, because that's what we do. Uh, we're focused on the way the world's going to work uh, and uh, really transformational growth. So with that, let me uh, in moan as Chairman Fat. The bond market did something very strange. It rallied. It, that means interest rates went down. Uh, that's a very curious uh, uh, phenomenon uh, in this market. Uh, the, the Fed market basically says the opposite. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, that's true. I often look at the 10-year treasury note yield. We've also seen U.S. oil go down lately, as well as gold and silver, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And crypto in general did have that downfall, but I don't know if I associate them one-to-one -one with the inflation trade. And uh, reminiscent of another time when the bond market was right and uh, the stock market, uh, yes, and the stock market was wrong, it was really in the uh, 06, early 07 timeframe where the bond market was warning that uh, the world was slowing down and we had no idea how much it was going to slow down. Uh, but as we all know, it did. And that's true, bonds did go up before the big stock crash in 2008. So, so the smart money goes into bonds before stocks are going down. We would submit that uh, we believe the economy will not drop into a recession, but we do believe there's going to be a recession scare next year, and it has to do with inventories. Uh, we believe that inventories are beginning to pile up. I've mentioned before they've piled up in our homes as we now have hoarded for Christmas uh, and before we normally would during Christmas time and Hanukkah. Uh, so uh, that's, that's been the force, first source of inventory accumulation. And uh, we see a number of other sources, and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail when we talk about the economy. Uh, so we think we'll skirt a recession, but we think that the inventory drawdown is going to cause um, serious dislocations in pricing, uh, whether that's commodity prices, or finished goods prices. 
Uh, so stay tuned for that. And the other thing that the bond market may be focusing on right now is China. Uh, China, the government, is aiming at the heart of that economy in an attempt to achieve common prosperity. Uh, now, what is the heart of that economy? It's real estate. Real estate accounts for 75% of consumer savings in China. And uh, pricing is coming down as the government uh, uh, focuses on deleveraging in the real estate uh, market and actually um, getting rid of a lot of tycoons who are not, who are... So on both points, the first being inventory, she's been playing this tune all year, saying that saying that consumers are going to be hoarding inventory. For example, like home builders will be hoarding lumber because lumber prices kept going up and up and up and up. Um, so why not just collect all the lumber right now so you don't have to buy it at a more expensive price later? And not just with lumber, but with a bunch of other commodities. Once the demand is met, everyone's going to have a bunch of supply and then prices are then going to be going down. And yes, with China Evergrande, I don't know if that story is over yet. The whole world is kind of watching, and I believe markets can be moved by that news. But who knows how that's going to play out. And not consistent with common prosperity. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I think on the last YouTube video, I really do believe this is playing with fire. And uh, we're uh, a bit concerned about how rapidly and how, how, how rapidly China's economy will slow down. Uh, it already has slow, slowed down, but how much more uh, does it have in front of it in terms of a slowdown? And, uh, and we are watching uh, some commodity prices suggest, uh, that suggest, like iron ore, uh, down more than 50%, suggest that um, perhaps the slowdown there could turn into an outright recession, which China has not seen in more than 20 years. That would be crazy. Again, that whole Evergrande situation, it's a real risk out there for the markets, but China will always be in the news. It always affects what happens over here and around the world. They are the second biggest economy after all, and there will be a ripple effect. If there is a recession in China, that would have a major ripple effect on the US and the rest of the world. We often hear the US and China being enemies, but they also very much need each other for each other's betterment to grow their economy. All right, and that's all I'm gonna show for the video. She goes into a lot more detail for the next 20 minutes, but those were some interesting points that I wanted to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of ARK Invest and Kathy and her philosophies. As always, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thank mm -hmm. you.